All right, we're set up on the Pico now. Got my 5 volt regulator, power supply. Got my Pico BNC connected to the signal and the earth on the actual power supply. And just running Pico 7 on my Surface Pro. So I'll take you to that screen. We'll get started. All right, guys, uh, bear with me. I'm very new to Pico, and obviously Pico 7 is uh, a bit of a struggle too. So I'm just going to muck around here, turn off channel B. Um, we'll change the scales on channel A. Um, we'll start the car first. Um, then I'll go over and change channel A scales to get a more visible waveform on the screen. Then we'll go down to 5 volts. Be the easiest way. It's a 0 to 5 volt sensor anyway. Um, we'll change the sampling rate down. Obviously, it looks really ugly at the high sample rate. Uh, because of the slow response of the actual transducer that I've got on there. So I'll, I'll just moving it around here just to see where we can get the best looking waveform. Um, one kilo samples look the best. Uh, I, obviously, as you can see, I'm going down a little bit to see if we can make it look a bit better, but it's still not looking great. So I think one kilo samples was the best. So we'll go back to one kilo samples and we'll leave it there. Um, and we'll stop the car. Uh, we will get that on the screen and um, yeah, we'll have a look at how that looks. So there we have it. Um, we'll zoom in on this, we'll have a look. Uh, it's very finicky on my touch screen because I've, I've got it on the Surface Pro, my Microsoft Surface Pro. So um, it's very finicky with the touch. With the pen, with my finger, it's, it's, it's really hard. Really, I think the best way to do this is to, is to use a mouse, but I persisted with this video with, um, with my pen, with my Surface Pen. Um, it worked out okay, but yeah, look, we put the 720 degree rulers up and it still looks right, everything's in the right spot. So even though it doesn't look that great of a waveform, it still does a decent job. We'll compare it to the WPS 500 and see how it looks. All right, now we're ready to go with the WPS. So we'll just get that BNC cable connected up and then um, run it and see what we get. And let's compare And what I'll do after that's done. I will actually leave the exact same settings that the guided test for the WPS in cylinder sets. And I'll take that back out and I'll put my uh, in cylinder uh, DIY one in and we'll see how that reads with the exact same settings as the WPS. All right, we're in here. We're gonna set this up as a guided test. Uh, so we'll just go start the car and start the scope. All right, as you can see, beautiful waveform already. Um, so we'll just go back and we'll stop that. We'll zoom in on one section. And as you can see, high detail, um, really great obviously as we know because the responsiveness of the transducer is, is really high on the WPS 500 so we'll get the rulers up there we'll put the 720 out and we will see how that looks compared to the original DIY one um, and as you can see great waveform everything is very detailed uh, with all the markings so very happy about that um, and obviously a class above the actual DIY sensor so another thing we'll do is we'll just bring the zero line down on this obviously because it's already a guided test and it's set up it's got zero lines it's the, the pressures are right so we can see you know exhaust back pressure and stuff like that yeah. all right let's give the diy one another chance on the same settings as what the wps was but let's just run that with this one again and we'll see what it looks like and we'll go from there all right guys we probably don't need to do too much with this one but you know as you can see started up the car and the waveform looks horrible with the you know the sampling that the WPS 500 is used to because of the slow response rate of the transducer which I've said a thousand times already so you know as you can tell it's not worth it it's probably not uh, you know the ideal thing to be using when you're really diagnosing something that's very intricate to see the minor detail um, but you know at the end of the day DIY does the job how far you use it that's up to you. 
So as you can see, very ugly on the same settings, but that was to be expected. So, you know, going into this, we probably all knew that nothing was going to compare to the WPS 500, but, um, you know, here's a good example. Uh, I'd never really use anything else other than the WPS 500 to diagnose something properly and to sell work to a customer, but the DIY sensor is great for home. If you set it right with low killer samples, you're still going to get a decent reading. Uh, you're going to see if uh, things are happening in the wrong spot, so you've got excessive exhaust pressure. So don't be discouraged from making one and, and using it yourself. But um, if you want some serious diagnosis, you're really going to need a WPS 500 or a high-end sensor at least. Um, so, yeah, look, like I said, don't be discouraged making a DIY sensor, but definitely don't expect the world from it. Hope you found this informative, um, and uh, thanks for watching once again.